nothing new on viewer releases, I think, since our last meeting. We have three things in RC that may be of interest. Uh, performance improvements viewer, which uh, the graphics folks have been working on for a while. A um, lot of nice speed ups in terms of frame rate and also uh, smoother rendering. Um, that is that is in the, it's almost ready to ship, but we don't know when we're going to ship it stage right now because we've got, um, you know, just one, one or two bugs coming in at a time. Um, we updated the RC for it this week and uh, hopefully we won't get any more showstoppers, but we will see. Um, we also have the MFA viewer out in RC. That's the one that includes support for multi-factor authentication. If you opt in to uh, MFA on the uh, on the the website, then uh, that will be enforced by this viewer. Um, and then we've got the next mate uh, out in RC as well. And uh, let's see other upcoming stuff. We started discussion about a uh, materials project. Um, the idea here is basically to turn graphics properties of objects into kind of first class entities so you could have a you could have a materials item in inventory and could then apply that to uh, things you're modeling and I had a lot of good discussions about that at the content creators meeting yesterday and I'm sure there will be more to come um, so this is the very early stages um, a lot of room for discussions and change of directions, but uh, we are just getting rolling with that this week. Um, and I think those are the main things. We've got a bunch of other viewers sort of waiting in the wings. Um, performance floater with auto FPS. We want to, it's out in project viewer, want to sync up with uh, Beck on getting a sort of a final RC-able version of that. Um, the legacy profiles had been waiting on some server side work, which I think is done now. And so we are in the process of trying to get that one uh, spinning along again. Um, and uh, a couple of other things that are kind of farther out from release right now. And I think that's about it. Um, so can cover any uh, topics of general interest, if you want to hear more about any of those projects or anything else, what's going on in, uh, you know, TPV land these days? Yeah, we're hoping the next promotion will be performance improvements viewer. Um, if the if we, if we get more must fix bugs, it's possible that we would reconsider that and try to get something like MFA out first. Uh, let's see, question about a less than 30 days token. I don't remember the details on that. I thought that, I thought that we were saying that the uh, specifics of the timing kind of wasn't part of the API 
as as envisioned. Um, let's see. I don't. It's Brad here. I think Brad's out this week. Um, yeah. Sorry, I don't have any more details on that one. Does anybody else uh, have any info on that? It's probably a question for Brad, really. So it never asks you to authenticate. Uh, it should be bugging you at least every 30 days. If it's not, that sounds like a bug. Uh, so, uh, Kitty, you're asking about a less than 30 days token. How how would you request that? Is that something you'd want to have as a setting when you opt into MFA? Or are you just saying you think the default should be less than 30 days? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we have some internal hook for testing, but I don't know if it's accessible outside. Um, I, I just passed the question along to Brad in Slack. He's he's out this week, but uh, we'll get that when he gets back, and I'll try to uh, try to follow up when I hear from him. Yep, sounds good. Uh, yeah, I talked about the profiles here a little bit. Uh, we'd been waiting on some new uh, server-side work. There's a new cap that was being put in. Uh, that is, I think, done now, or at least the first 
pass of it is done, so we are in the process of trying to adjust the viewer to take advantage of the new cap and make some other changes. So um, we the the uh, profiles viewer is kind of rolling again, but uh, don't have an exact time frame for it. Any cool new features coming in the upcoming releases? Tip mesh is letting you see the soon to be uploaded mesh in world. Yeah, yeah, that that sounds super cool. One of the things that comes up pretty often with uh, mesh upload is just wanting to have a better view of what it's really going to look like. And you know, even if we had a bunch of fancy graph paper and control for lights and everything. You're not really seeing the in-world experience until you just stick it there, you know? I second that motion on better visibility on content before it's uploaded to world, be it objects and animations. Yeah, I guess animations would be another good one. Um, I mean, you can preview the animation on the little reference avatar, but you can't you can, do it in world. Right, you can't preview .anim, but you can preview .bvh. It'd be nice to do both, because with .anim, you can offset bones and things like that, which you can't really do with bvh. Like, for instance, yesterday I had to make a deformer for a tail offset for a certain body, but the only way for me to know if it worked is by, you know, uploading it. <laughs> Maybe also including the uh, an option to view those bones inside the animation importer would also be a good thing. Hmm. Could you res a link set and then kind of impose your own properties on it in the viewer? Sort of hacky, but it might work. I 
it would require res rights, yeah. But I mean, I was thinking about you know the the sort of real the real link set would be made up of like the cheapest things possible, you know, just a bunch of cubes or something. So hopefully, it wouldn't be too bad on land impact. I'm not really sure how we handle. Uh, there's like temp attachments, right? Would that would that be relevant? I guess temp attachments still exist in the on the server side. They're just uh, flagged differently, right? Yeah, I'm not sure about creating a whole link set. Uh, like for Animesh, we had to create a viewer side um, viewer side object to hold the skeleton. You know, basically the the, the pseudo avatar that drives the Animesh. Um, but that's probably just a single prim. So how's it working now? Yeah, I mean, there are various places in the viewer where we create objects that only exist in the viewer, right? We've got, like, all the all the temporary avatars that appear in, like, the upload dialog, um, or, as I said, like, the thing we use for, for the driver for Animesh, um, or various, you know, debug graphics where we'll have some, you know, bounding box diagnostic that appears or whatever I think some of those may just be stuff that gets drawn that it doesn't actually correspond to a real object but uh, right none we of those have actually have a... where we make real objects none of those are actually viewer objects except for the control avatar mm -hmm. um, that I'm okay. aware of um, which is one of the reasons why it's so hard to improve the visual quality of the preview render um, and why proxying the thing that you're about to upload and and world is definitely the right way to go. Yeah, well, even if we're only using it for um, control avatars now, I mean, is there any reason we couldn't use it to create other kinds of things? I mean, the the call is there. You can specify the the type of the viewer object. I think. It's just that viewer objects are really complicated to create. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm sure it's a bit of a hairball at best. Um, on the issue with texture loading, which I had brought up at the content creator meeting yesterday, uh, I had a few friends with older laptops that they usually use, and the reason that we're having them use the maintenance viewer is because it's the one that is actually working for them. But I noticed uh, with the network settings being so low, which I know that they have better internet than I do, and I'm, you know, plus 600 bags down, uh, that the default network settings is like a bottleneck. Not still caching, but uh, I would say with the initial download when people enter world, uh, that downloading process is very slow. So I have them turn that up to you know actually meet their network speed. Is there a way to actually detect what their network capability is and use that instead of defaulting to something incredibly low? Did then... you see an effect from changing that? I, my oh, point is that the network setting is only for UDP and that the textures are coming it's, over HTTP. It's, an, anyway. it's an immediate change. I had them clear their cache and test it with the network settings changed and, and turned up and textures downloaded much, much faster. Uh, hmm. I wouldn't expect that. Uh, so which, which exact setting did you change? This is the network bandwidth option. In, let's see, I'm trying to find that. Is that in preferences or is that something you were putting into? That's uh, in one preferences. Of the it's in preferences. It's on the setup tab at the top. Right. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I, I'm in that code right now. Um, and yeah, that's definitely something that we could default to higher than three megabit. Um, uh, but I'll need to check with uh, the backend folks to see what the implications are on our. Uh... <laughs> Let me put it this way: uh, I've messed up that number before, and it brought the grid down. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to make sure that if we up it for everybody, bad things won't happen. Well, maybe not just upping it as a whole, but taking into account their their available bandwidth, or in some way, you know, checking to see if. You know, that would be an option. It's just a suggestion. Yeah. Um, I, I don't doubt that it. It's likely that it is a bottleneck. But I, digging through the code, I I, I don't think that it's the main one. Um, if you watch your network usage, we don't mm -hmm. come anywhere close to holding whatever setting you set it to, because most of the time the background threads are just waiting to be told to uh, fetch a texture. Right. And this is even after your most recent changes. Um, they would be on mainland with their draw turned down pretty low. I hadn't cleared the cache, and it was an immediate yeah, like, you, you, difference. You, you, I, I haven't pushed the, the background thread work um, on this one yet. Um, so. it's, I've been heads down on that for, for uh, well, as heads down as I can be for the last week. Mm -hmm. Um, and th that is one of the complaints I hear is when they use the, the viewer, it's the settings are the textures load in very very slowly so nothing yes. appears to load and so they get frustrated and that just turning that one setting up it improved that experience so yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm sure it helps but um there there are a lot of problems like, like some of the stuff i've found so far is uh like uh, where that's causing it to not even hit three megabit or come anywhere close to it um, are things like uh, we'll think we're running low on VRAM and we'll immediately start unloading textures and then reloading them and that churns on the background threads. Um, there are some spots where uh, people were trying to um, wait for a millisecond before trying again and the way they did that was they issued a call to sleep on the background thread, which would interrupt not just the one request, but all requests, and not just for one millisecond, but for 20 or 30, because sleep is not precise. Stuff like that. Um, stuff like, uh, oh, well, this, this thing transitioned from uh, being um, downloaded from HTTP to uh, now it needs to go to the decode, and instead of just immediately sending it to the decode thread, it would 
wait until the next frame. Um, I would like by going through a middleman that was processed on the main thread. Just there's all these things that that make decoding a texture take like ten times longer than it should. And I'm trying to track all those down and fix them. Uh, you said you were looking into the um, the defaulted 512 usage of, of memory. Uh, I was wondering what your input, or if you had any input on that. Uh, right, so instead of having uh, our experiment we're trying right now, which should work out, uh, is and it's running on Windows, and this has been checked in to, uh, I can't remember, there's Jira. Um, I think it's SL17005, but it, that could be wrong. Um, is instead of having users tell us how much video memory to use, we ask the operating system how much video memory is free uh, using DXGI. Um, there was code in there that was using some OpenGL extensions, but that code is only reliable on NVIDIA. And DXGI is... Uh, reliable on all Windows 10. Um, and if you're not on Windows 10, it'll fall back to Direct3D 9, which has a call to get the available texture memory. Um, Brad was looking at how to make that work on Mac, and it looks like it won't work on Mac, so we'll have to uh, do some... Uh, different accounting there. Um, like on Mac, you can get the amount of installed VRAM, and you can get, well, actually, yeah, that, that, that's all you can reliably get is how much physical VRAM is installed in the machine. It won't tell you how much is free or how much your process is using. even with metal. Okay. I'm glad it's being looked at. <laughs> there's, there's multiple cards, there's modern cards now, just have so much available memory in most modern yeah. systems, so it doesn't seem... Yeah, um, so running around with that change at uh, D's store, um, <laughs> the fewer will... <laughs> Uh, I, I've got 10 gigs of VRAM and it'll use, it'll get up to using all of it, um, well, close to all of it, and then it'll start paging textures out, but where before it would use around a gig and a half and then start paging out, which you hit a gig and a half and almost like in, in under a minute. Uh, back to other... Do the TPVs have a uh, different code for uh, VRAM management or texture fetching or both? Well, if somebody wants to submit a PR for that, I'll I'll do a Tracy pass on it.
Are you talking about my old code? Yeah, we had to revert that um, because it didn't work on Intel. Or AMD, if I remember right. But that was a long time ago. I think it made the crash rate go up. Um... But 32 bit was a lot more common back then. Did you update object occlusion? Uh, and the performance viewer, we made a change to object occlusion. It uh, works vastly better. Yeah, there was there was a spin lock. Uh, someone was. Uh, someone had introduced a, a setting that would cause object object uh, would cause the occlusion query readback um, to wait until um, the query was ready instead of just saying, "Oh, it's not ready yet. Check again next frame," which does mean that you'll get more frames ahead, but it also means you don't have a sync point. was testing this on mainland, going between different sims rapidly, and it, it's just a vast, vast improvement, so thank you. Awesome. Yeah, that's the one. Um, don't do that. That's bad. It's better just not use occlusion culling. You'll get the look you're going for with better performance. Yep, uh, that trace looks like the traces that I'm seeing with the code that we use, uh, and it's it's like the the image will be decoded about 400 microseconds after it's put in the queue. Um, it's just all the all the code that says, "Hey, you need to fetch this texture now," is being really conservative about issuing requests to fetch.
Yeah, I don't know. Uh, the the code that I've seen so far seems to um, set the minimum discard level to uh, uh, discard five, which oh, what is that? Yeah, which isn't very good. Yeah, so once upon a time, I accidentally made the viewer ask for uh, 500 megabit instead of 500 kilobit, or something like that, uh, and it took the grid down for a day while we figured out what was going on. Um, I'm pretty sure the simulator now protects against that. Uh, but I definitely want to check with our infrastructure folks before changing the uh, default amount of bandwidth that new users use. Yep. Start turning that knob and it's real easy to DOS yourself.
wasn't saying it was a good thing. I was just saying, like, it is a thing that I noticed. And but it fixes it for some people. I mean, me included. Especially when, you know, things just aren't loading in. And you're trying to go places, do things. Yeah. Um, when you have, like, someone who's on an old laptop whose only real alternative is to use the default client because it's the only thing that works for them. But then they're still having to struggle with, you know, textures not loading in, even with the very short draw distance. And once it's cached, it's cached and it's fine, but just getting those textures in. So I don't know what the solution is. It's just one of those things that I think could be improved. Yep. And, and right now I'm trying to focus on making it hit that that limit like and and hold it when you're in a region that where you're loading textures because it's real it's all over the place um like you'll get a burst and then it'll go idle um and that mostly has to do with how we schedule the downloading of the textures uh and, and i'm not worried about getting a sustained texture throughput um having a bad effect on the grid because those go through the cdn um but that maximum bandwidth slider also affects things like uh object updates so like just watching an object or a bunch of objects moving around could suddenly start using more bandwidth I mean, I guess you could make the case that changing the limit would cause you to get the object updates faster, which would give you the texture IDs faster, which would let you fetch the textures faster, even though the texture fetch itself is happening outside of UDP. Yeah, and I'm not going to claim to know the system well enough to, to say that that's not being applied to texture downloads. Um, if people observe an effect on texture downloads, I'm, I'm inclined to believe them. Does that have anything to do with um, crashing on teleport? When you're switching regions, it just fails to make that handshake. It's a very common issue. I have experienced that with the higher bandwidth limit. It does become a little bit more reliable, but it is still a common occurrence. Yeah, I wouldn't be super surprised if something that is doing the throttling is... Um dropping a packet that should be reliable but isn't tagged as reliable uh because uh, using our message template and how it works and and how some messages are tagged as reliable which means if they get dropped from throttling or otherwise they'll they'll get resent and if there's something that needs to be reliable but it's not and it decides to get dropped then oops 
It's gone forever. Well, that's just a guess. I bet Ryder has ideas. I have, I have lots of ideas. Um, anecdotally, I've heard the same thing, but, but you know, it's not been something we've been able to prove. All right. That was a bit dramatic. Drama in Second Life. Never. La gasp. Grief, there was that high drama content creators meeting a couple weeks ago. I think I missed that one. Not sure if it was high drama, but it was certainly high volume. Sorry about that. <laughs> I said I was going to bring as many content creators as I could. Chat, uh, chat, re uh, Kitty, chat ranges um, are right now a Linden only thing. Um, they are sort of, you know, as far as being non Linden only, they are kind of waiting on on UI since since altering the chat range in a region changes who yeah it it it, it has privacy implications and, and we, we need to be able to make very clear to uh, to residents that they're in a region where their chat carries twice as far so they you know you might uh, <laughs> oh, you're you're going to you're you're going to give product ideas there, Beck. You could add the indicator as default in the minimap viewer. Yes, yes. For things like that, like what what is someone's available chat range? Just to get like a a, a hint or something, something. Yeah, I I believe Firestorm does that. It does have the option, but you have to enable it, and it's not obvious. So it's a checkbox. How much more obvious? I'm sure. You can't add a new checkbox unless you remove two first. Um, Beck, the information is being sent right now to the viewer. Um, it's in the uh, region data five. Ah, it's it's being sent.
most of all those functions are hidden in debug, which would be nice to have available in some capacity other than having to search for it under developer. Some of the functions anyway, which I feel should be obviously or obvious in, in somewhere in preferences. Yeah, it's um I I would I would have to go searching for for what message I send that in. But it's one of the it's one of the uh it's one of the region info messages. Hold on, I'm pulling up the message template to see if I can. I'll have an answer for you in a moment. So yes, it is in the region info message and the block is region info five. Yep, those would be the ones. Oh, and it writes it to the log. Yay. All right, folks, we're about at time, so anybody needs to run off, they can. Anybody wants to stick around, they can do that, too. Have a good weekend. Yep. Hey, Ryder, is that a new avatar? Actually, actually it's uh, parts, parts, parts of it are new. The crow is new. Uh, yeah, the, I really the, like the, the crow. Yeah. I'll... I'll Send you a link to where I, to where I picked it up. I think uh, a French sim.
Thanks for everyone's feedback and questions. Have a good weekend. But uh, no, this is this is actually my uh, parts of it are a throwback to my first avatar. My my first avatar. Ooh, red card, red card back. All right, I need to run. Thank you, everyone. Yep, yep. Thanks, folks.